<laughs> okay. Well, first I want to thank you for being here in this session of the Science Rendezvous. My name is Marco Lopez. I am working currently in the Laboratory of Applied Microbial Ecology under the supervision of Dr. Ulik. Uh, I am here to present you the last re oh, one of the research we are doing in our lab. So first, I want to introduce you to the issue because, uh, so you can understand why we are doing this. So first, uh, I want you to see, uh, or maybe you know that we live in a world which is mainly microbial. This means that the mass of microbes or the prokaryotic mass which exists on the planet is very big. But we usually don't realize it, obviously, because we cannot see bacteria. So basically, remember next time you go to the forest or you are Working, uh, walking in nature, just remember if you see uh, all the mass of trees or the, of plants you see, it's uh, more or less the same mass of uh, prokaryotes which exist, but we cannot see them. So this fact that we cannot see them has, uh, had, has caused problems throughout the, uh, sorry, throughout the times because it has been very difficult to study microbes in this way. So basically nowadays, there are two ways of uh, study microbes, uh, which are either we can culture them, so we can see them on plates, we have plates with bacteria or with something else, or we can basically extract the total DNA of soil and sequence this uh, total DNA, and so we can obtain the specific identities of uh, the bacteria which are contained in the soil. So this is called uh, metagenomics. And uh, you basically have this kind of information in which uh, you have the relative abundances of specific uh, taxa of bacteria. And you can, on, uh, on this way, uh, take a picture of the community without culti culturing bacteria. Oh, I, sorry for that. Again. So, this means that a lot of bacteria we know today have been only described based on their genomic information. If you see this graph, starting from the 19, uh, middle of the 1980s, the amount of bacteria we have uh, described or we know it, they, uh, that exist based on their sequences have increased, uh, well, maybe here in the last uh, years almost exponentially. And uh, the amount of bacteria we have actually seen on plates, which are, uh, we, can, uh, we can see them on plates and we can characterize them further, has increased linearly, mainly because a lot of the bacteria which exist in nature cannot be cultured. So this, is, this phenomenon is known as the, I didn't put it here, but it's known as the um, uh, uh, great, plate, great Plate Count Anomaly. So basically, we have a lot of bacteria in the environment which, which we know about, and we have just a small amount which we can actually see in culture. So for what do we still need cultivation? Basically, we, need culturing, uh, we still need to culture bacteria for several reasons. The state of the art of a taxonomical description of bacteria still relies on having a species in pure culture, so that we are sure that what we are describing is uh, the bacterium we have. Also because the, da the data uh, which comes from metagenomic uh, uh, technology is, uh, can, is not perfect in the sense that the sequencing technologies rely on cutting all the DNA in small fractions and putting them together uh, with algorithms. So at the end, uh, yes, we have a, a build-up genome which might be erroneous. So if we have a one bacterium with one known genome, we can then uh, make the algorithms better. And also because bacteria, as you know, are a repository of biomolecules, which can be interesting, such as antibiotics and other stuff. So uh, uh, what we are doing now in the lab is that basically we are using a growth promoting factor, which is secreted by this bacterium, the yellow one is uh, Micrococcus luteus. This bacterium uh, produces an extracellular protein which is uh, released to the um, uh, extracellularly. So basically we retrieve this, uh, we retrieve the protein from the extracellular medium of a culture and uh, basically we add it to the, to the soil. So uh, just a little 
form or a little explanation, explanation on how this works, you see you have the peptidoglycan of bacteria, which is the main component of the cell wall. Um, there is a, this uh, bond here, the beta-glycosidic bond. So basically, this uh, molecule, what does is it starts cutting this uh, structure. So it creates, uh, it maybe it makes, makes it a little bit loose for saying something like this. So basically, when you see bacteria replicate, you have one bacterium, and then uh, usually, it, well, replicates into another one. So when it is dividing, there is a need to cut here the structure of peptidoglycan. So this is one of the proposed uh, mechanisms uh, in which this um, substance works. And this is how it helps other bacteria to grow. So the result is that we see more bacteria, almost 10 times more than we can culture normally without the cells, without the substance, sorry. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I, want, I also want to, to say thank you to my group. I don't have any picture of you because we are a lot of new people in the lab, so maybe next time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so it's time for questions. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, well, my question is if that when you're talking about not being able to culture some bacteria, you said that we are not able to see them on plates. Exactly. So does it mean that these bacteria are there but just not visible or just they don't grow there? This is, all, this is an issue. This historically has been an issue of uh, sometimes bacteria can create very small colonies. And simply because they are very small, we cannot see them in the plate. Uh, but uh, th this is one of the issues of culturing, but it doesn't have to do with uh, replication or with this molecule. OK, thank you. And this is, this answer yeah, yeah. depends. OK. Thank you. So another question? Not so. So I, I would like to thank you once more. <laughs> <laughs>